Welcome everyone, I'm Exceptional, and I hope you are too. Coming into winter of year two, my priorities have definitely begun to shift. Our profit-making infrastructure is sitting pretty good right now, and my goals have shifted towards perfection. We're starting the season with a little under 50% of the perfection goals finished, so let's see what we can accomplish this month. In three, two, I start the day with a quick pop down into the cellar to check out how our wine aging is going. All gold quality, it's looking good. Unfortunately, the path from gold to iridium is the longest for wine, taking 28 days. I'll also make a quick note about my kitchen. I've been running around with a double speed buff from coffee and food pretty much since year one. That's largely in part because of the crab cakes and spicy eel that I was finding in the Skull Caverns when mining. Since I haven't been doing nearly as much of that lately, I've actually been using pepper poppers and coffee. I don't really care what the secondary buff is, I just want to cruise around the map faster. The greenhouse is coming along nicely, our trees are filling out, and our ancient fruit crop is getting bigger, our rare seed crop is getting bigger, and most exciting to me, the coffee crop is getting smaller. With the amount of time I have for idle thought while harvesting kegs, I think I will be incorporating these into my money-making strategy. You'll have to find out more about that later. Next on Ginger Island, I'm picking up a new key quest. I took a moment to hum and haw about this. Extended Family is a quest that I'm going to want to complete at some point, but I'm not feeling fishing at the moment. I end up going with Key's Prismatic Grange, needing 100 of each color of item. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. At the moment, it's easier for me to complete and rewards more gems. While I'm here, I decide to spend a few more of those key gems. I buy the recipe for Magic Bait. Then I pick up Pierre's Missing Stock List. And although there's still plenty in this shop that I want, I'm not going to be frivolous with these key gems quite yet. Back in town, I want to give Pierre his stock list, but oh, hi, Maru. Yep, you get a salad. Entering Pierre's, I activate another cutscene, and this one's fun. I have no idea what motivated my character to be rummaging through Pierre's bedroom bookcase, but we find his secret stash. We get a player choice, either telling Pierre that his secret is safe with me or that his wife deserves to know. I would definitely say that when you're in a partnership, your partner needs to know what's happening with you. But this is a video game, and I enjoy sowing a little chaos. Not to mention when that cutscene is over, I trigger a second cutscene in the same building with Pierre's wife, Carolyn. She doesn't have a secret stash, she has an entire little extra room behind the kitchen. This is actually a friendship event, which will unlock another recipe for us. Carolyn's secret indulgence, it seems, is this tea. I mean, it's pretty twinkly, but it's when the little absinthe fairy from Eurotrip shows up that I start having questions. Whoa, man, what's in this tea? The funny thing is that all of this triggered after giving Pierre his stock list. I guess we just weren't good enough friends five seconds ago. Usually, you are not able to buy seeds that are out of season. Out of season seeds are now available all the time, but they do cost 50% more gold while they're out of season. Then I start wrangling together supplies for the key quest. I wasn't in love with my blue item options, so I'm at the saloon manually buying 100 Joja Colas. I don't regret choosing this quest at all. The items I chose because I had so many of them were 100 Void Essence for purple, strawberries for red, sap for yellow, salad for green, the Joja Cola for blue, and the die guide online said that coffee would work for orange, but no dice. I was gonna use some pumpkins, but that felt like a terrible idea, so the next morning I bought some ore from Clint. Copper ore will count for our orange item. Alright, nailed it, what's next? My community board quest for the week involves collecting bone fragments, so I'm down harvesting skeletons with Monster Musk. It's nice to do this with a purpose now and then, not always just for fun. My rabbits in the coop have actually been providing a huge amount of wool. I'm so confused as to why I would ever want a sheep. But another big processing task that I'm taking on is going through all of that wool, processing it into cloth. Just add it to the list of chores until the several hundred go away. Then I decided to start chasing down some of these secret note clues. Funny enough, some of those items that I need from the museum I can get by solving these clues. I start off in the desert getting these strange doll and check out what the pan on my head allows me to do. Ooh, a little pan spot in the pond. I'll just pond this up quick and holy moly. Yep, that was worth it. I've also stopped converting all of my Omni Geodes into artifact tropes. One of those last items that I need is Lunarite, and it can only come from Omni Geodes and Frozen Geodes. And with a few hundred Omni Geodes sitting in the box, I'm gonna be here a minute. I'm holding on to what I feel is important and then just selling everything back to Clint. I find my Lunarite, and that is the last item being donated to the museum. 
I check my rewards, and again, I will come back to claim all of these once I start decorating the house, but I want that star drop. That's gonna be star drop five out of seven. We need to catch all of the fish and woo somebody. Originally, I was gonna get Krobus as a roommate, but then I found out that you can't adopt kids with Krobus. As much as I don't want them, I'm gonna need them. As far as our polyculture and Frankenfield at Ginger Island are going, progress is being made, but there's still a little bit to go. The rest of the day is then spent in the mines. The mines just kind of feel like a universally good thing to be doing with downtime. The next morning I'm up at the tree farm collecting more resin for probably more kegs, and ooh, I do something so different today. I come to swap over the quarry kegs from the west side instead of coming via the minecart. Just shaking it up, you know, keeping it interesting. Then I start gearing up for a fishing adventure, including grabbing some of that magic bait. Magic bait allows you to catch fish from out of season regardless of weather. Given it's the dead of winter, that's probably gonna be helpful. The first one that I go after is actually another legendary fish. In winter, fishing off of the southern point of this little island in Cindersap Forest, we can find the glacier fish. This should be the last legendary fish that I have to catch. It's a bit of a struggle, but I get him in the end. Then, one of the trickier fish to get your hands on is actually the goby. You have to fish down into the lower section of the waterfall pool. I have not mentioned to this point that you can actually change the direction of your cast a little bit. If you hold down the directional button as you cast, you can send your lure to the left or right instead of straight out in front of you. You kinda have to do that to catch this goby. Next I go after the Dorado, and I don't feel the need to show you all of these. I'm just looking at my log, figuring out what I'm missing, and then figuring out where I can find it. As I said with the magic bait, season and weather are irrelevant. And of course I can't forget to mention our little raccoon friend. As you continue to help the raccoon family, the shop will expand, and today is the most exciting part. This is the sixth bundle that I'm completing for them, and I get rewarded with fairy dust. Not only that, but the trade is now available in the raccoon's shop for one fairy dust for one mystic syrup. Can you see where I'm going with this now? Also, as I come up to harvest even more of said mystic syrup, I will note that I have tapped a bunch of these pine trees. I don't have a huge amount of use for pine tar, but I figured while I was waiting for all of the trees to grow up, I might as well be collecting something from them. I'm glad that I got to mention this, but this is the last we see of the pine trees. Like Saruman says, I rip them all down. I will be replacing these with maple trees, but again, secret secret. I then track down more fish catches going after the void salmon in the witch's swamp. A second reason that this fish is exciting is that it's required for the theater bundle. Another nifty thing that I've crafted lately is the farm obelisk. If you craft two and place them at different locations on your farm, you can instantly warp between them. Why would I walk all the way to the animals when I can just choo? This might just be my opinion, but easily one of the most exciting things that I get to talk about is finally ripping down Franken Farm. I'm so excited by this that I'm even ignoring that cluster of battery packs at the top of the screen. And I think at this point you're aware of how much I want battery packs. I left only the green beans behind because they should be the last thing we need for polyculture. Now I start laying out the field with not only iridium sprinklers, but pressure nozzled iridium sprinklers. There are two upgrades to these sprinklers. One, the pressure nozzle which I'm using expands the radius to a 7x7 seven seven instead of a 5x5. Five five. The other one is the enricher which when supplied with fertilizer will automatically apply it within the radius of the sprinkler. I wanted to get as much out of this field as I could, going with the pressure nozzle for less sprinklers. I take a bit of extra time with the layout, just making sure that I will never have to touch this again. I run out of time on day 7, but I'll be back tomorrow. First though, after realizing that I only needed 5 of the 6 items for the theater bundle, let's turn that in. 1 dinosaur mayonnaise, 1 prismatic shard, 1 gold quality void salmon, 1 silver quality wine, and 5 gold quality ancient fruit. This triggers an adorable cutscene with this little fella. All the others made it back, except for him. And he can go home now. Goodbye little fella. We're left with the message that something will happen soon. Alright, it's time to finish off the Ginger Island conversion. I do have to redo a little bit of the work like the hoeing that I did yesterday, but it doesn't matter to me. If this conversion takes the whole day, that's what it takes. I fill out and water all of the spots that currently have sprinkler coverage with, you guessed it, 
star fruit. Then I head down to the bottom row just to eke out a little bit more usable space. Down here though, I'm only using iridium sprinklers and even quality sprinklers, just cause there's no need for anything more fancy down here. And I repeat the process on the west edge. You'll notice across the water, there is a little bit of additional farm space that I have been growing things in. I want that to be more opportunistic farming as opposed to being part of the main field. Key's cuisine looks good enough for me again this week, and overnight we get the cutscene of the movie theater being repaired. Now we don't have to look at that horrible, abandoned Jojo warehouse anymore. On the morning of day 9, let's go check out the fruits of our labor. It's beautiful. Once I decide which of the townsfolk I would like to court, I will have to bring them on a date here. There is a friendship event with Abigail where you get to play Journey of the Prairie King. You may have noticed the arcade machines in the saloon, and there are a couple of little mini-games on them. In this friend event, you actually play with Abigail cooperatively. This is the only Journey of the Prairie King that you will be seeing in this video because I don't like it. Despite the completionist in me, getting a deathless run of Journey of the Prairie King is not something that I have any interest in. Years ago, I did spend a couple of weeks trying to get this achievement, and that's when I decided, nah, we have even more keg rotating. And then I try my darndest, despite how dark it is, to try and get all of the spots in Ginger Island covered with speed grow. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but I only miss three out of like, eh, somewhere around 800. With all of that behind us on the morning of day 10, I'm back to tracking down fish. And even more fish. Magic bait is pretty awesome. I catch a midnight carp followed by a rainbow trout in the early afternoon while it's snowing in the middle of winter. Have I mentioned just how much fun the endgame progression is? The next morning, I am officially out of excuses. It's time to start wrangling up a bunch of items to use for gifts for the villagers. They all like, dislike, and love different things, but there are quite a few overlaps, as well as a couple items that are universally disliked or universally loved with a couple of exceptions. Rabbit's feet are a great example, being loved by every character except for Penny. Obviously, the more the person likes the gift, the more friendship you gain, as well as if you give them a higher quality item, you will get even more friendship points. Thank goodness for time pausing in single player, because I did spend quite a bit of time referencing the wiki, trying to find the best gifts that wouldn't completely overwhelm my inventory. Diamonds for Evelyn, Gus, Jody and Marnie, Krobus and Maru, Penny and Willy. Oh, wait, actually, no diamonds for Maru, I have gold quality strawberries. Duck feathers go to Elliot and that missing person I mentioned before that I still haven't realized. Deep breath. Pink cake for Jazz and Vincent, pumpkins for Abigail and Willie, coconut for Haley and Linus, coffee for Harvey, emerald for the dwarf Emily and Clint, beer for Shane and Pam, peaches for Robin, void essence for the wizard, strawberry for Demetrius and Maru, cactus fruit for Sam, leeks for George, salad for Leah, and crocus or daffodils for Sandy off in the desert. I also discovered that making pumpkin soup was fairly straightforward, so those go to Sebastian. Anybody not mentioned on that list gets a rabbit's foot. You can only give a townsperson two gifts per week, so two days per week I'm gonna be doing social stuff. Trust me though, the introvert in me just wants to go back to hiding at the farm. While visiting Sandy in the desert, I pop into the back room, which is Key's Casino. It's another super laborious process, but I decided just to buy all of my key coins. There's some pretty cool stuff at the shop, but the one thing that I absolutely need is the Rare Crow. After purchasing this one, I only have one more left to grab. And the next day is spent once again handing out gifts. Come on, Haley, it's 9, 10 in the morning. Get out of bed. Here's a coconut. Passing out gifts and tracking down villagers is pretty much an all-day thing sometimes. But I just had to take a moment to come and appreciate the Ginger Island Farm. Also, you can see that tiny little bush in the top corner. That's the bush that gives us the ingredients for Carolyn's tea. I have to sell both the tea leaf itself and the brewed tea. So I guess you could call that getting two birds stoned at once. At the end of the day, with the socializing complete, excuse me for a moment while I go blow stuff up. The kegs were just recently rotated, the socializing is done, Ginger Island is growing... Well heck, I guess I'll be a part of Squid Fest this year, let's check this out. I decided to pretty much spend the entire day here trying to catch squids. At the end of the day, I've managed to catch 10, which is actually gonna net us some pretty nifty things, including that final book that I needed. Crab pots for dummies or something, who cares? That's my last book and I got it done. The week resets on Sundays for gift giving, so on the 14th, I'm back out doing my social loops. Ah, shoot, but I don't have any of my gifts with me right now. For organization's sake, I have been keeping all of these items that I set aside for gifts in a separate chest on the side of the farm. 
That way, anytime I have to go do some socializing, I just pull everything into my inventory and off I go. After the first round of gifts, I made a decision that I wanted some more toys. I'm rounding up a few items that may look pretty random, but there's also a few stacks of pumpkin juice in my inventory. I sell all of the pumpkin juice for just over 3 million gold, also triggering the legend achievement. That one is for earning a total of 10 million gold on the farm. The 3 million that's burning a hole in our pocket right now, though, isn't even gonna last the day. Stop 1 is visiting Krobus so that I can buy the Return Scepter for 2 million gold. The Return Scepter has infinite uses and will instantly teleport me right to my front door on the main farm, no matter where I am. That means I don't have to be carrying around these farm totems anymore, and I decide to do a little bit of inventory management. The next stop is the Wizard's Tower to finish spending all of this coin. I'm gonna be buying my last two obelisks, the Beach Obelisk, which warps you to the beach, and the Earth Obelisk, which warps you up to the mountain. And the rest of the day is spent socializing. Ah, what do you mean I can't give Robin her gift while she's asleep in bed? I was able to give Haley my coconut the other morning, how come Robin won't take my peach tonight? The next morning, Leah stops by for another cutscene. She presents me with a statue called How I Feel About Egghead. I guess the townspeople are starting to figure out that this bachelor is available. Right on, thanks Leah, I'll put that here next to my gigantic cow. It's the second day of the gift giving week, so priority one becomes just that. A beer for Shane at 8.30 in the morning, Jazz gets a pink cake, I am such a good influence. A quick tip is to remember that all of the information that you need to complete everything in this game is inside of this log. You can even click on each of the townsfolk to review them individually. That tab even shows you the history of gifts that you've given them and whether or not they've liked them. As I continue hunting down people to give them gifts, I'm reminded that the night market is in town. This does last a couple of days and there are a few fish I want to catch here, so I'll be back. First though, the kegs need tending. I've been using them for beer recently as I wait for that starfruit crop from Ginger Island. The next morning I grab a new key quest, Key's Hungry Challenge, once again getting down to floor 100 in the Skull Cavern Mines, this time without eating. But with my full tilt jade production, I can just staircase to the bottom and that's gonna take me a couple of hours, maybe. I didn't want to sacrifice the prismatic shards either, and speaking of, I spend a few more prismatic shards to change the enchant on my fishing rod. I wasn't entirely happy with the auto hook enchant and wanted the master enchant instead. It's the same old chores throughout the day until the night market finally opens down on the beach. The fish that I need to catch are actually at the bottom of the submarine ride. For a thousand gold, this guy will take us down to the bottom of the ocean where a couple of unique fish lie. The first of which that I catch is the lovely blobfish. If you're unaware of what a blobfish is, I suggest a quick Google. They're strange little creatures. The next one I hook is the spookfish, and I have really exciting news. Wait for it. Master angler achieved. I have now caught one of every single fish, with a couple of exceptions. Once I get the extended family quest from the key room again, I'll come back to those. That honestly took so little time that I was a little bit frazzled of what to do with the rest of my day. So, Monster Musk, Ginger, let's go mining! Boom boom, ain't it great to be crazy? The next morning I can speak a little bit to working smarter, not harder. I've been bringing a bunch of wool to bed with me every night, because in the morning I can just pop right out the front door and cycle the looms. Plus, the wool is super cozy to sleep with. In the mailbox, Willy has sent us our prize for becoming a master angler. He explains that this star drop has been passed down from Willy Sr. to Willy Jr. for oh heck, probably a thousand years. A thousand years? And oh, my character did not hesitate. Down the gullet. It tastes like eggs. Thousand year old eggs, I guess. But that's gonna be Star Drop 6 out of 7. Let me quickly present key mining quests with robust jade production. Since I was that deep anyway and still need supplies, I decided to just carry on mining for the rest of the day. I wasn't really using a lot of staircases through that process, but then I get down to floor 190. Notice that it's 1.30 a.m. Staircase, staircase, staircase! Floor 200, no problem. My rewards are three life elixirs, pretty good, and an apple sapling. Uh, thanks. And this is why I make sure to keep my bed close to the door. 
I don't know how close I shaved that one, but I'm sure it was within milliseconds. Speaking of working smarter, not harder, the next morning I'm rotating the kegs, and then I pop out to Ginger Island and don't! The starfruit crop is ready to harvest, and I could have put these in those kegs instead of the wheat. It all needs to get processed anyway, and then I re-sow the field with more starfruit seeds. As of right now, I have no plans to grow anything else on this island. The rest of the day is spent doing chores, and I wanted to knock off another secret note. At 12.30 at night, something's going on at this bush. I click on it, and Mayor Lewis and Marnie pop out scurrying off in opposite directions. <laughs> what were you up to? The morning of the 19th, it's time to unify the greenhouse crop. This is the last of the sweet gem berries for a little while. I do have a plan for the ancient fruit. The entire greenhouse is now planted with ancient seeds. I now have nine mystic trees producing syrup every three days thanks to the heavy tappers. And now it's finally time to start producing starfruit wine again. Aging or not, that stuff is so profitable. And now it's time to start knocking off some of those crafting goals. I do have to craft one of every single item in the game, and if you have advanced tooltips selected in the options, it will show you how many you've crafted. This workbench is miraculous throughout this process, being able to access all of the inventories around it. After doing that for a little while, it's back to hunting down those items that I haven't shipped. I crafted a dinosaur mayonnaise, but that went to the bundle, and I haven't sold one yet, so grab another dino egg. This, by the way, is why I hoard pretty much everything in my runs. And thanks to the book that I got quite early on, I don't need Marnie at the desk to buy a couple more animals. I didn't plan ahead the best on this one, and my goat and cow are both producing large milks. Turns out I didn't sell one of the regular sized milks or goat milk, so I need a couple new animals. The next day I decided to go a little bit crazy in the mines, deciding to see what I could accomplish if I invested a full day into it. This wasn't even a favorable day luckwise or anything like that, nor did I have the best buffs on me, and I made over a hundred thousand gold. Not bad at all. A cool little trick I accidentally discovered is that you can actually move your chests around while they're full. I'm 99% sure that this is another addition to 1.6 because I don't remember this being a thing before. Unfortunately, playing chest hop seems to have scrambled my brain a little bit, but I'll get there in the end. The end being tomorrow because I pass out trying to fix it. The morning of the 21st, it's time to start thinking about my long-term goals. My goal is to reach perfection, but like I've said, this game is exactly what you want it to be. I plan to achieve perfection by the game standards, and then I want to do perfection by my standards. That's going to involve more barns. This morning, on the way out the door, I had a bunch of butterflies in the old tummy. Why, you may ask? Well, I stop at Pierre's shop to buy a bouquet. Gifting this bouquet to somebody is your way of asking them out. After much consideration, I decided that Miss Egg is the only woman for me, so I'm going to be marrying Harvey. Eligible people to date in the town are maxed at 8 hearts, and once you ask them to date you, they go up to 10 hearts. Beyond that, once you marry them, they go up to a maximum potential of 14 hearts. I need Harvey to at least like me 12 and a half. It's a lot more of the same stuff. It's the first day of the week, so it's more friendship and double checking with the raccoon to see what he's got for me this week. I have unlocked what I wanted from the raccoons, but there is an achievement to continue helping them. I'm back on Ginger Island at the key shop, where my focus, I think, is going to be entirely on getting the rest of these recipes bought now. I buy the bluegrass recipe, and I think we need 90 more key gems in order to buy out the last of these recipes. On the morning of day 22, I decided to actually establish that little strip of farmland on the other side of the river at Ginger Island. I craft a few more solar panels, really staying with my knack of installing solar in the rain, and I use the now prepared strip to start growing fiber seeds. There's a fun way in which I can kind of cheese an infinite amount of ancient fruit, but I might not go down that path. If I decide to do it, I need a lot of fiber. I have also been staying diligent with the community board quests, and I'm at a point where we can't get the three last ones that I need. I want to complete one of every type of order, but the three that I need aren't in season. I will continue to do these quests, however, because I do need to complete a certain number of them for another achievement. I'm finding more and more that I have these blank spots in the day. I've just been using it to knock off little things like more of these secret notes. There's a Junimo statue behind the community center. I'll put that here, next to the solid gold Mayor Lewis statue. Yep, that's a thing. I can't let you in on every secret in this game. A big part of its charm is being able to explore it.
On the morning of day three, it's time to start filling out that cooking tab. I'm grabbing pretty much one of anything that I think might be involved in food. Start with broad strokes and then get more focused from there, right? It's again a little bit of a process, but the interface does once again show you what you have and have not cooked. If you're curious where I'm pulling these ingredients from, clearly not my inventory, they're all in the fridges that I have. You start with one fridge in the kitchen, and once you unlock it, you can buy as many mini fridges as you want, which will share the same inventory. Well, they're different inventories, but as far as the kitchen cooking is concerned, they're all one inventory. As I start coming down to the last couple of recipes, I want to highlight another tool that is really useful. Sorry console players, this is definitely more for the PC, but there's a website called the Stardew Checkup. I will leave a link to it in the description, but this is a super useful tool for tracking your perfection. It not only tells you what you need to find in order to get perfection, but it also provides links to the wiki. If you're having trouble locating your save file, the easiest way that I can suggest is in-game going to the bottom of the option menu. Just under the screenshot, you'll be able to open the destination folder. This brings you to the screenshot folder, but if you go up one level, hey presto, that's where the saves are. The next day I want to continue buying more farm buildings, but I decided to go against getting another barn. Perfection first, then expansion. I drop down a fish pond. I will be getting multiple of these, but the number one priority is getting a sturgeon in so that I can make caviar. Sturgeon row is the only fish row that will convert to caviar. Since I've never dated a man before, I haven't seen this cutscene with Harvey. I'm sorry that my profits are getting in the way, but mm, look at those mystic trees. Harvey's planned a romantic balloon ride for us, even though he's afraid of heights. This is actually a super sweet and heartfelt cutscene. I've put like seven, eight hundred hours into this game since it first released in 2016, and I'm still finding new things. Today is the day too that I finally figure out that missing person in my friend list. Poor Leo, I have completely neglected him up here. Ooh, wait, that's a bunch of fiber, I'm gonna grab that. Which is exactly the mentality that led me to ignore Leo this long. Hey, buddy, yes, yes, I'm bird friend. Unlocking Leo as a character has been available to me for far too long. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the friendship heap. Yep, there he is, a blank slate. This is gonna take a little bit of catching up. Unfortunately for Leo, my friendship hours are only on Sundays and Mondays, so I'm back in the mines. I do that for the entire day, making another 100,000 gold. I have a bit of time at the end of the day, and I want to turn in the next raccoon bundle. For this one, I'm rewarded with a star drop tea, that's right! The next day, the starfruit wine is ready, but the starfruit crop is not, so I'm back to filling these in with wheat. See, I told you it didn't matter that we missed the day before. On top of his now usual duck feather that he'll be getting two of every week, I feed Leo all of the star drop teas that I collected. This boosts him up four hearts equal to the dwarf. When we reach six hearts with Leo as well, something's gonna happen that I feel makes him easier to track down and give gifts to. We're only a couple of days away from spring of year three, so it's time to plan ahead again. I took a little bit of time figuring out what my options were, and I've decided to, once again, just go with a strawberry crop. Tried and true, plus the multi-harvest crop is gonna leave me that nice stem moving into summer. At this point in the game, I am all for reducing labor. As I convert a huge amount of strawberries into seeds using the seed makers, I'm also getting a couple of extra ancient seeds along the way. I mean, sure, awesome. And this month just keeps getting better. On the morning of day 27, all of our wine in the cellar has aged to iridium quality. That is a glorious sight, swapping it out for the next batch immediately. And this day just keeps getting better. The next harvest of starfruit is ready on Ginger Island. I'm sure you know the shtick by now. Starfruit out, starfruit in. And of course, once that beer from yesterday is done processing, in goes more starfruit. The last part of the day is once again spent just converting strawberries to seeds. And here we are on the final day of year two. Since it's Sunday and the first day of the gift-giving week, that's pretty much what the day is gonna be. This is the part of the friendship grind that I feel starts getting really exciting when I can start being more selective with my gifts. You have to get everybody to 10 hearts or with eligible dating candidates up to the maximum eight hearts. Not to encourage such behavior, but you are able to date the entire town at once. 
If you just so happen to be doing this, be sure to pop by the saloon for a really funny cutscene. Not this guy though, Harvey is my boo. I managed to get another Star Drop Tea from Prize Ticket, so that's going to Leo. The Star Drop Tea is super nifty, granting one full heart of friendship outside of the weekly gift cap. That's how I was able to boost Leo up to six hearts so quickly. Because we're now at six hearts with him, we trigger a cutscene on the beach. Leo's story is pretty sad, actually. He was shipwrecked on this island, and his parents have been missing since. Yes, missing. He's been raised by the birds ever since, but since we're now good enough friends with him, he trusts us enough to introduce him to other people. The first time I saw this, I was so happy because Linus and Leo become the best of friends. Leo needs parenting and guidance, and Linus wants nothing more than to pass the lessons of his life down to another. I just can't get over this game. It is so wonderful. Because Linus is such a wild man himself, he and Leo bond over bird calls. Leo will no longer be exclusively on the island, but I'll come back to that in just a second. First, I just need to quickly hammer off the key quest of the week, popping down once again to floor 100 in Skull Cavern. The reward today? A dark cowboy hat. Cool, catch you later. The rest of the day is spent doing chores and preparing myself for spring. The last thing I wanted to do on the 28th of winter, year two, is give you an update on where we're standing. The perfection tracker in Key's Walnut Room reveals we are 72% completed. With the exception of the Great Friends achievement, I'm pretty darn close to the rest. The farm so far has earned a total of 11.8 million gold. For now. And check out the friendship standings. As far as the tracker is concerned, we're 52% of the way there, but I'd say we're beyond that. Taking a look at the powers, we have one left to get. I already know what that one is, that's the Spring Onion event with Jazz and Vincent once you have enough friendship with them. Finally, checking out our shipping, oh yeah, we're getting real close. Fishing is 100% completed, heck yeah. Artifacts and minerals, both also 100% complete. And the cooking tab has some serious progress on it compared to the start of the month. With the achievements as well, we're getting closer by the day, only having seven left to gain. Probably six if I'm honest, I'm not doing the Prairie King. I thought it would be fun once again to do a quick little chest tour as well, feel free to pause and really investigate them if you feel compelled to. There's one chest though that I've been teasing showing you all year. It's empty. Nah. -ha. I sold everything in it, you'll see it overnight. As I tuck into bed on the last day of year two, we get one final cutscene. Like I mentioned, Linus and Leo are now gonna be the bestest of friends, and Leo moves in to the tree right next to Linus's tent. The part we've all been waiting for, though, is this screen. I've only been selling exactly what I've needed to to afford the things I want. Everything else has been shoved into that chest, netting us 5,861,250 gold. The cloth that I finished processing, 500k, the iridium quality starfruit wine, only 125 of which are worth almost 800k. Probably my favorite is the 102,000 from the 69 truffle oil, nice. But through all of the fishing and everything else, if it was an artisan good, I pretty much shoved it in this chest, also putting all my smoked fish in here. The last tab is then again just expensive stuff that I've been hoarding. Most of this loot is from golden mystery boxes. And that's gonna be a wrap for year two. I want to extend a special thank you to all of those generous enough to support the channel through YouTube memberships, Patreon, and Super Chat. Your generosity makes this content possible for everyone out there to enjoy. From the bottom of my shell, thank you so much. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. Watching all the way until the end and your engagement help my channel so much. So if you feel like I've earned it, consider leaving a like and comment about the run, what you'd like to see in the future, or just to say hi. Bonjour! If you'd like to keep up with my future releases, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications to never miss a video. I'll catch you in the next one, everyone. Take care.